Hello, and welcome to another replay analysis where we're looking at Diamond Zerg Boys versus Protoss. Oh my god. A matchup as old as time. Let's see what's going on. Okay, it looks like we already have a 12 pool coming out. Okay. Not good. Just simply not good on that one. I wanted uh, so this is why it's not good. I I will say this. I'm not gonna harp on this for too long because I'm hoping that you just accidentally, uh, Mr. Vol'jin. Uh, I hope that your big ass troll tusk accidentally hit the wrong fucking button on the keyboard, and you meant to hit make drone and you hit the fucking like F and G and you're like ah, shit. Make Overlord, I guess. Whoops. But, uh, that sucks. So I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, thinking that you meant to make a drone, but you just accidentally didn't. Because uh, right now, you Larva capped for the first 11 seconds of the game, which is really bad. That sucks. That's a lot of time to Larva cap that you're not generating Larva. And uh, that's going to set you really far behind. That's uh, no buenos right there. That's not good. And then you're doing a... F okay, so... Alright. Yeah, you're just a little bit, like, it's fucked up. You're, you guys are probably, like, talking on Discord or some shit, I would imagine. I don't know. Mom's talking to you right now. Hey, Vol'jin! Go fucking handle Sylvanas. She sucks. I'm dead. Okay. This game is just a mess already. Uh, if this ever happens to you in the future, I would highly recommend you just take a third base. So here, here's my tip to you, okay? So this game is already now going to be a specific type of thing. But in the future, if you ever get blocked by Protoss like that, be like, okay, cool. I'm going to now run by your pylon with my drone and go take that base or that base. Either one works. And then just do a speedling expand. It's totally fine. The fact that you reacted to that by feeling forced to go for a late pool gas sucks because here's why. This has no aggressive potential anymore. It has zero. You are beyond the timing of the Protoss being able to go for a gateway nexus core. Okay. Even if the Protoss went nexus first into gateway core. You will not get into his base before he has a setup that can block you out, and then you will always be behind in economy. So you are playing a, at a disadvantage right now. The only way this would help you is if he actually cannon rushes you. Now, if he cannon rushes you, then if that if you guys are like friends and he always cannon rushes you, and that's just what he does, this could make more sense. But even then, like the way you went for the natural first and like went back and then made the pool, it's just yeah, not great. Not great. Not ideal. So we'll uh, we'll say that that's a possibility. If you're dealing with someone who cannon rushes a lot, okay. If this guy is like, I fucking cannon rush every game. <laughs> he like twirls his mustache. <laughs> I'm a fucking Protoss player. <laughs> if you run by the natural and go take your third, all you gotta do to to fuck that over is you can make a pool after you start the natural at your third. So you make a pool after the fact, like a normal build. Overlord follows your drone to the new base. Okay? And if he cannon rushes this base as well, I want to let you know something. Even if the Protoss only makes a pylon and then cancels his cannons when you cancel your hatchery, the Protoss still invests more money into that than you did. Canceling a hatchery is 75 minerals. Canceling or letting a pylon finish is a hundred. And obviously, do not cancel your hatchery when he starts building a pylon. You would cancel a hatchery when he has cannons that are like almost done. Because the beautiful thing as well is, is if he makes multiple cannons, that's so much fucking money that he wastes just fucking with you essentially. And then your pool then would be up at a normal time. And every base he continues to cannon rush you on is going to delay. 
more things he's going to do macro oriented because he's can rushing and can rushing and can rushing. And every time you cancel a base and go to a new base to expand again, have your overlord follow the drone. That way you can see the hatchery before it's done to know is he going to can rush it without having to have hatchery vision only. Yo, Alicia, thank you for the raid. I just I I'm doing a replay analysis right now. Uh, Kathy actually just raided me in a coaching lesson, and uh, now I'm doing a replay analysis, and now you raided me at the same uh, right right after. Lots of Starcraft teaching stuff, but Alicia, thank you so much, guys. If you don't know who Alicia is, you should uh, go check out her stream. I'll link her stream on my channel really fast. She's super chill, super cool. Uh, I've known her since Wings of Liberty. It's been a long time. Uh, but Alicia, thanks, thank you very much for the raid, and uh, welcome everybody in my stream coming from hers. Hello, hello. Welcome to... I'm a mostly StarCraft guy. I'm a former StarCraft pro gamer that now just kind of like does content. I don't really pro game anymore. Uh, but maybe someday again I will in like Frost Giants game or like a new RTS or something. But yeah, thank you so much. I, I hope you had a good stream, and uh, thank you for telling me to have a good one as well. I appreciate that. Have a good rest of your night. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I'm doing a replay analysis. This is actually a YouTube video, so what I just did is going to be part of the YouTube video. <laughs> so I'll, I'm going to get back to it now because it is going to... I am making a video right now. Uh, but yeah, anyways. If you get cannon rushed, like I said before, you can just throw your pulldown after, expand around uh, around the cannons, and if he keeps cannon rushing you, you can just cancel and you can always have the advantage of resource investment. You don't spend as much as he does. And then if he cannon rushes your second base... I would say make a Roach Warren after your pool, and you could go into Ravagers. And you could literally make three Ravagers and deal with it. Because three Ravagers can outrange cannons. Uh, like you can shoot a Corrosive Bile into a cannon further than the cannon can shoot back at you because you can shoot the edge of the cannon. And then you can also use those Ravagers to poke him aggressively. There's a lot of examples I've done. I don't want to turn this in. Like I could literally talk for how to beat Cannon Rush with Ravagers for 30 minutes straight. But I've done a lot of videos about that already, so if you guys really want to know that, I'm sure you can find one on my coaching section. Just type in, like, Vibe Ravager Cannon Rush Defend, and I'm sure you'll probably find a video. I've done it many times. Um, yeah, anyways. Let's talk about what's going on. Rather than what you should do, let's talk about what you are doing. But it, I don't like it, though. I just going to tell you right now, I don't like this, what you've done. You've chosen to handicap yourself, is what you've essentially done. So you're just straight up going for a Roach Warren right off the bat. And this is going to probably fail. And the reason why is because he's not cannon rushing you. He's not actually investing, which means he's going to have a faster development defensively. Although, yes, he has cannon rushes, or he's got cannons and stuff defensively. The only way this works, if you attack him with Ravagers, the only way this works is if he makes cannons aggressively. <coughs> which slows down things like that. You are probably not going... Like, you're going to get to his base, and he's going to probably have a battery by the time you get there. And, like, a Void Ray coming out. And you're not going to do anything. So, and his Nexus is, like, already almost done. Like, he you're just going to be so far behind now. Balls, balls. What's up? Also, I would say another thing you could have done too, which I would like if you're if you know like this is just it's rough for you, okay? There's so many things that are rough for you right now. This is really negative for you to be in a position that you are. But another thing you could have done is are you going to make multiple queens for this hatchery? The answer is yes. So one thing you could have done is you could have immediately opened up with an inject on your hatchery, made another queen. Walked your first queen to like right here and started smacking the pylon. When the queen has 25 energy, walk back, drop a creep tumor, go back to smacking the pylon. Your queen could have killed the pylon at no cost of drones. These lings are going to kill the pylon. You're not going to take the base right away because you can't afford it. And if you do take it right away, you're going to have a bunch of larvae doing nothing because you're about to make ravagers as well. And you're mining gas. You can't afford three base expansion with how little your, your mineral economy is and how much other expenses you have. So this is going to be open for a while. A queen could have easily killed it and then went to inject your third base while also spreading creep while your other queen continues to inject your main base after your first inject. Like, efficiency. You could have done something better than making four lings. You don't need to have a third down super fast because you can't even take it anyways. Now these lings are going to do nothing and be a waste of two drones that could have been mining the entire time.
They're gonna get over here, and they're gonna get pushed away by a cannon. Or just never engage it, which they shouldn't. So you took a third base really fast. This... Like, you have roaches going across the map, right? You have roaches going across the map, but you need 225 gas for this to make sense because that's what three Ravagers cost. And also, you want to make Ravagers sooner than later, like ASAP. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you in a second why. I got a sub and it's got a message. One sec, sorry. Hey, Vibe. Been playing Zerg lately thanks to your B2GM series. Terran will always be my main, but thanks for making me a more well-rounded player. Hell yeah. Thank you very much, Sword Saint Zero. I appreciate the support, dude. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Much fucking love, dude. Thank you for the 17, and congratulations on the success. Uh, okay. As I was saying, uh, what I was saying was, uh, think about it. Like, there's a couple of reasons, okay? First one, you want to have 225 gas. So each Ravager costs 75. 75 times 3 is 225. The faster you make a Ravager, and then stop mining gas, the faster you can run across the map. Because if you're going to make a Ravager either way, you have to make a Ravager either way. It's going to happen at some point anyways. But you might as well make it sooner than later, if you're going to do it, because a Ravager's move speed is faster than a Roach's without move speed. Like a Roach with Glyle Reconstitution, which is the upgrade for Roaches on Lair, that does move faster than a Ravager, but a oh, Ravager yeah. moves faster than a Roach without move speed upgrade so you could make time in your favor if you make ravagers first as soon as they spawn and then run ravagers across the map other than running roaches across the map the only time you should ever run ravagers across the or uh, sorry the only time you should ever start running roaches across the map is if you expect to take damage on uh your roaches and then you can evolve them into a ravager and heal them to full that's the only way that would work. That would make sense. Like, if there was, like, two cannons here, and you wanted to ignore them to go to his base right away, and you go, fuck it, I'm running right through that, and one of your roaches is yellow, and another roach is, like, red. Because they almost died getting hit by the cannons. At that point, you could then go right here, away from the cannons, make Ravagers, and when the Ravager finishes, the red and yellow roach will be green again because the evolution gives it full health again. And then that'd be that would make sense. But if it's just for straight-up oh, mobility, you need to just yeah. go right now that's uh this is such a waste of time uh it was at zero thanks for the gifted sub and uh frosty thank you for the prime i appreciate the prime dude much love on the support um yeah so you prioritize gas and then you, you're not using it for what you like you delayed your economy and then you didn't go to the extent of what you should have gone for now you're just gonna have somewhat of a delay here going on uh now i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie i don't think you were wrong on the fact that you made four lings and you took off gas early and you wanted to get a third faster because you're not expecting this to do much. You're in try trying to fix your economy with that. The, ch the, the way you set up taking off gas to take a faster third, <coughs> that does make sense in, in a way, logically. But it doesn't make sense, though, that you... Uh, of, like, the, the initial reaction you gave yourself against the cannon rush and what you've chosen to go into now because you're just super far behind. You've done like a half-assed roach attack now with a half-assed economy, if that makes sense. And then also you didn't force any type of investment from Protoss aggressively. So he's going to be ready for it. He should be. If he's not, he's making he's, he's missing the beat on like his tech path. Like if he hasn't started, has he started a core? No. So he's definitely fucking up. He's... Let's see how long... Like, I just want to quickly watch and see when his gateway finishes. And show you something really fast. His gateway is done at 2.36. His core, if he started it right now, is a 36 second build time structure. So that means that he could have a core done at 3.12. And then at 3.12, 29 seconds after that, he could have a battery that's done. Because a battery is a 29 second build time structure. And to prove it, I'll mouse rip. 29 seconds. So from 312 plus 29 would be 341. At 3 minutes and 41 seconds, he could have a battery that could be ready to be overcharged when you try to engage it with Ravagers. And then on top of that, if he would make a Stargate, 
as soon as he has the core, he could make a core, uh, Stargate at 312. And a Stargate's a 46 second build time structure, or 43 second build time structure, which means he could have a Stargate done at uh, 355. So, the, in, in theory, what it means is, is the battery could live long enough to stall for a void rate, and then you, you would just do nothing, essentially. And let's watch when your Ravagers actually get to his base. Your Ravagers got to his base, and you cross about his first building the first time at... Three fifty-five. Easily could have a battery by now, and easily could have a Stargate done right now, and he's starting to make a Void Ray. The fact that he is overreacting right now and making uh, multiple gateways and zealots, it doesn't make any sense. This makes no sense for him. And he also doesn't even need more than one cannon right now. And the reason why is because... I feel like you guys are both kind of missing the beat on Protoss is ahead because Protoss didn't cannon rush you for a long time. Protoss would need to make more cannons and shit like that and more batteries than one if Protoss had invested in like a cannon and a pylon, a cannon and a pylon, a cannon and a pylon, and then suddenly three Ravagers just walk across the map and then you have a hatchery like over here and a hatchery like down here. And the game is like super spread out. And he it, like... Your Ravagers are pushing fast when he just made like four different cannon rushes or three different cannon rushes on three different bases. And you just go. Yeah, he would need a lot more cannons then and like batteries then and maybe even... Uh, never a Zealot. I, fucking Zealot makes literally no sense. This is only for Zerglings. <laughs> it's not for Ravagers. Uh, and he had a can he had opened up Forge first, so he, the Zealot is pointless. He made a cannon like before he made a Zealot. So never make a Zealot, Mr. Drake. It's really bad. Uh, only Mega Zealot if you're getting like 12 pulled. That's about it uh, for early game like this. Um, but yeah. So both of you are kind of making yourself play slower than you could be. Literally, at this point in the game. Neither one of you is playing efficient at this point. Uh, you, you both need to understand the situation a little bit better, I would say. To understand what you're capable of dying to and what you're capable of doing on top of that. But now going back, we're, again, we're talking about the Zerg, so let's focus on the Zerg. Let's talk about his build now. We'll just we'll just assume because this guy is also playing inefficient, the game is stabilizing. Doesn't have to be this way. Protoss could win the game right now if he was playing more efficient. Zerg didn't have to play as inefficient as he did either. I just want it to be known. This is important to know this. Vol'jin and Drake. Drake. Draka. Both of you need to have a little bit more efficiency in your early game if you care. If you don't care and you're just playing for fun, that's fine whatever but if you're looking to like play as efficient as you can you guys both need to like kind of rethink your opener about how you go for it and Vol'jin for you specifically seriously go check out some of the Ravager like how to defend cannon rushes and how to identify cannon rushes and what they mean go check that out so much fucking information for you because your reaction to cannon rush is really not great You've, you're, you're gimping yourself all game because of it but again we'll disregard the first four minutes of this game and we'll talk about what you should do now from now on, we'll pretend like it's a new game. For now, what you should do is you should definitely make a third Ravager. Because three Ravagers put a lot more pressure than two. And uh, you can deplete the you can deplete his batteries super fast if you do this. And you can apply more pressure to Protoss for as long as possible. It's definitely worth doing, okay? The fact that you have a Roach here still is weird. Um, but make him overreact like he is. Make him feel pressured. Slow him down. Behind this... I like that you're not mining much gas anymore. Make fucking drones like crazy. Make nothing but drones. Overlords and drones. Overlords and drones. And then whenever you, every time you have no larva, make a queen. Even if you don't need an injector, make a queen. And the reason why is because the only way you get out of a situation like this, if you ever take a base that is not your natural first, and you take a base in the forward position instead... The only way you can cover this properly is with good creep spread and good queen coverage, especially if it's a Stargate, and this is most likely going to turn into a Stargate. Like 99% of the time, this will be a Stargate follow-up. So queens are nice against Stargate, but queens are really good at giving you creep control 
And the only way, if a Protoss player is going to rush a Stargate like this and like just go, like let's say, voids, and you're like, oh my god, he's the kind of guy that goes mass voids and kills my main. The only way you are going to really have good control is if you have creep touching the edge of the map on both sides. So, for instance, a creep tumor that spreads all the way down to right here. It should be a priority right now for you to spread creep. Not this way. Not this way. Not this way. But this way. Straight fucking down to the wall. Because what that does is it gives you an alert. If your queens are like right here and the void ray crosses creep right here. You can go, and then you, from once from here, then you can go forward and spread outwards. So you like cover the walls and then you go out against Sky Toss, against Void Rate, like against Stargate opening style Protoss players. That's the idea of how you'd want to spread creep. Because then you have about an extra from the Void Rate going from here to the Void Rate going there, an extra like 10 seconds of time for your Queens now to go from right here down to right there. So instead of going, hey Queens, go to my main because Void Rays are now here and they're prismatic aligning my main base. You can go, hey, queens, go to the main because he just flew over a creep tumor and his void rays come over the cliff as your queens approach the hatchery. And then he's like, he turns on prismatic alignment and your queens are here right now, smacking his ass immediately as the fight starts. So if he stays, you might just kill the voids and you could even transfuse the hatchery. And that's great. Or if he's not crazy and greedy and like he would like really wants to kill the hatchery, he'll just like maybe he just doesn't turn on prismatic alignment or whatever. And he just like runs away. He goes, oh, queens are here run away and if you have enough queens and he let's say he runs away to right here and goes straight for the mineral line you can have more queens down here also to help the mineral line because if let's say you see two void rays and you have seven queens don't send seven queens to the main base send like maybe four and leave like two over here and leave like one at your natural that way you can still have some queens initially poking the voids or something hopefully that makes sense but again droning is what you should be doing right now Drone first, uh, queen second. You have no, uh, so much larva right now. You have five larva sitting there doing nothing. You're not injecting either. Brutal, fucking brutal for you. You're you're actually, like, let me give you a tip on how to micro this. Because I think you're just staring at your your ravagers. Staring at your ravagers. <coughs> staring at your ravagers. Staring at your Ravagers. Staring at your Ravagers. Staring at the Ravagers. You finally went back about like 25 seconds later. <coughs> Not great. Not great. Um, like 20 seconds or so. It was a long time of doing nothing. Here's how you should micro this, okay? It's as simple as this. Corrosive Bile, the cannon, at max range. Like, Corrosive Bile between these three buildings right here. And then hit hold position. So go Corrosive Bile, like rapid fire Corrosive Bile, and then hit hold, hold position. Macro. Seven seconds later. <laughs> Corrosive Bile, hold position. Macro. If the cannon is not dead, <laughs> do it again. Hold position. Macro. If the cannon is dead, relocate your Ravagers into, like, a line that is horizontal to where the cannon is going to be, to where you're going to Corrosive Bile. So don't diagonally Corrosive Bile that cannon because it'll make some of your Ravagers have some weird fucking movement. Instead, maybe move your Ravagers down a little bit. Then Corrosive Bile. Like, the, like, don't have them, like, here and Corrosive Bile there. Have them, like... Like, I guess where they would be right here would be fine because it is kind of horizontal to that. Like, if you think about a line about where you want to curse about, it would be, like, a nice line to where... You don't want to be, like, in range of a cannon shooting you, essentially. You don't want to overdo it. Like, I would never say... Uh, if you're going to, like, curse a vial the right side of the cannon, you don't want to have a Ravager on, like, the left side of the cannon. So it runs to curse a vial the right side of the cannon from the left side, and it runs in range to get shot. That's, the, that's what I mean when I say horizontally run at it. If you're going to cross the bile the outside of the cannon and you're already on the outside of where it is, it's fine. Just don't ever cross the bile on the, in, like on the inside of where you have to go and then you get shot by the cannons. That sucks. So I, that's, that's what I'm trying to explain. I hope that makes sense. But as soon as you know you're not going to get... You're, you can cross the bile rapid fire and then knock it by the cannon when it goes off. Hold position. Just make it easy. In this kind of a situation, when you're not trying to kill him, you're just trying to stall him, don't try to kill him. 
don't put all your attention into attacking him. Corrosive Vial, let it be. Because if you Corrosive Vial the internal cannon, which is not the external wall, your Ravagers will then shoot the wall on hold position. They'll just smack the wall for a while. And it just makes the Protoss go, you're under attack, you're under attack, you're under attack. And you're over here just going inject, inject, inject. Drone, drone, drone. Creep spread my creep. Nothing fucks up for your macro. But you're not doing anything with your macro. You're falling behind again like crazy. So definitely fix that mentality. Don't If you're not trying to kill him, don't try to kill him. Like right there, you keep fucking moving your avengers so much. Corrosive Bile, insta hole position. Because you'll run in range to Corrosive Bile when you Corrosive Bile. And as soon as it goes, hit H. It doesn't cancel the Corrosive Vial. It's insta-cast. And then as soon as you Corrosive Vial, you're going to be in range to shoot buildings that are in front of the cannon because the cannon is not in the front. And even if the cannon was in the front, what are you going to do then anyways? You're going to run around into the fucking the back? Do nothing? Doesn't do it. Like, even if, there was the, even, even if the cannon was in the front and you Corrosive Vial the edge of it and the whole position, you're already in position to Corrosive Vial again the next time. And if a Ravager doesn't get shot by a cannon, it's not going to run into the cannon. So you don't have to, like, worry about getting shot by the cannon, period. So that is a huge tip. Rapid fire that fucking thing, hold position every time. Makes it way easier. Uh, and then you should be, like, rotating this queen right now to the natural while a new queen gets made. So you have an inject immediately on the natural. Excess queens beyond the first three should be creep spreading constantly. This is not the time to take a layer. You are rushing your gas again. You are playing super inefficient. Like, what you should be doing right now, this is what you should be doing. All money goes one one mineral, one guy on, or sorry, one guy on gas, one dude mining gas. And even if you go beyond 100 gas right now, that's fine. What are you dealing with right now? Think about, think about it logically. What are you going to play against for the next, like, three minutes of this game or four minutes of this game? A Protoss player who is currently making a bunch of cannons and a bunch of batteries at his base. That shit is not free. You're forcing it with this. So why do you feel the need to force a tech rush? Because if he's making a bunch of cannons and batteries, he's not going to have any type of a real, like, all-in that can hit you. It's going to be harassment. And the only thing he's going to do that's harassing you, which you can clearly tell, is going to not be a gateway-based thing. And if it's not gateway-based, it's probably not robo-based, because robo kind of sucks by itself. It's logical that it's not robo either, because this guy just block the shit out of his doorway here like crazy this is such a cluttered mess he's probably going stargate he probably doesn't give a fuck that he made a mess here he's probably gonna go stargate so it makes sense right if stargate's a good follow-up as well to this and stargate's also a good way to deal with that but if he goes stargate if you just make queens it is the best response to stargate you could possibly have queens are better than hydras i just want you to know that queens are better than hydras for a while. The only time Hydras become better than Queens is when Hydras are able to be masked and they also have both of their upgrades. Like, I would say Hydras become better than Queens when you have roughly 150 supply. If you don't have 150 supply, Queens are better because they have more hit points. Their transfuses are actually usable in lower supply situations, which are also insanely fucking good. Gives the queens an extra 125 health in a cycle of the transfuse. They have armor. Hydras don't have armor. They have more range than Hydras do. They have more utility than Hydras do because you can make creep. They don't disrupt your larva at all. They don't cost gas at all. There's so many fucking benefits to a, a, hydra, uh, to a queen over a Hydra when you're low supply. Especially when you know the only thing your opponent's going to do is attack you with Stargate. And that's it. So... You should be fixing your economy right now while making queens, which in turn would make you have a rich economy, which would then allow you to make hydras crazy fast when you're able to afford them. So your build development is, again, fucking awful here for you. Like, look at what happened, right? This, the sport crawler, again, is... I would say the sport crawler is okay. I'm okay with this, but I don't like where you put it. The only reason why I'm okay with this is because if this guy makes an oracle, there is a chance that he's going to kill more drones than what a spore crawler would cost. So, like, because an oracle kills drones fucking fast. And especially if, like, two oracles showed up, he could snipe off, like, ten drones and fly away. 
And then if you would, that's that's more expensive than if you'd have just made three spores, one per mineral line. So I'm okay with you making spores because of the threat of an oracle. But if you made spores for the purpose of a void ray, I'm not saying that you saw the void ray, but in, in general, even if you see a void ray first, you could always go oracle second. I'm just I'm just trying to say that I'm okay if, if you go spores because of the possible the possibility of an oracle. But if you ever have an overlord near the stargate and you just see void ray, void ray, void ray, void ray. Do fucking not make or sport crawlers. It's a waste of your money early game. Queens already do the job. More than enough. And I would rather you make a queen over a spore. And you want to know the crazy thing? They cost about the same amount of money. It's 25 mineral difference. A sport crawler is 125 minerals. And a queen is 150. And someone out there that's like, it's 75, I'm not 125. You sacrifice a drone as well. So it's at 125. Ah, vibe, you're wrong. No, I'm not. And you're doing now. You're doing another fuck up in your build where you're going for, like, you're teching hard, and now which is rough on you again. But now you're going for a gas priority. You are going for a gas priority right now. Super, super, super fast gas. I don't mind that your idea wants to be a spire. That's okay with me. But I hate the fact that you're literally undersaturating every mineral line you have. This one just now got 18. You literally just made those, a lot of those drones. Like, look at when you make the gas. You make the gas with nine drones and you drop down to seven. That fucking sucks. And on this base, you did the same thing. You made the gas before you have fully saturation on your mineral line. And you rip off mineral line to saturate gas. This economy is awful for you. It's so low. You're almost playing this game like you're all inning him. With how little economy you're giving yourself. It's brutal. You're you're putting yourself in a spot where you could develop so much faster than you are, but you're not. Like, it, it, the crazy thing is, is you're prioritizing gas really fast, right? Think about this for a second. A lot of Zergs don't, like, a lot of people that play StarCraft don't understand this concept. But think about this for a second. If you rush your gas and your mineral income sucks, you get the ability to get gas initially faster but you mine less of it overall versus something else that i'll explain in a second because you're limited on base count because you can't afford bases however if you slam out your minerals like crazy and you saturate fully saturated three bases in this situation with queens and creep and then you take this base right before before you even take a layer you take a fourth base because you're at like 19 18 17 on the mineral line on three different bases and then you're still making drones while you're while you're consistently oversaturating your mineral lines you're using the oversaturation to start the gases and may and then saturate the gases and then you're like cool i have a fourth base that's now done really early and now i have a layer all it's going to do is it's going to delay your layer and your initial spire by probably one minute to do that because you're going to have cranking out larva like crazy and you're going to make up the difference in the gas that you don't have initially by having gas at a fourth base that's going to be up for like four minutes longer than it would have been because you could have taken a fourth base this game by probably like five minutes. But it's because of the situation that you're in. It's a mineral heavy. Queens answer everything here. And so and then that means you can also make a lot of drones. But instead, what you're doing is you're going crazy on the gas and you're just you're gimping yourself to aspire defensively super fast and you're not going to take a third. So now you're going to take a third base. Instead of it like five minutes, you'll take it probably like nine or ten minutes. And then the crazy thing is, is you could have taken a fifth base as well super fast and you could have just taken gas at it only. You could have taken a sixth base super fast and taken gas at it only off of like 80 fucking drones or like 90 drones, not off of 60 fucking drones. I'm not telling you, I'm, the, the point I'm trying to make here is, is you could have had right now at six minutes, you could have had 80 drones already, like 60, six and a half minutes, almost seven minutes, like the, the 642, the time you're at right now, you could have had 80 fucking drones already easily if you just did not prioritize your gas. And if you prioritize drones, it means you can expand to more bases faster. It means you have more income and then you can then use that income to turn it into gas later with more drones. Because if you're eventually going to go to 80 drones anyways, why not rush it right now when you can't punish it? Because what's he going to punish it with? A void ray? What beats a void ray? A queen. 
Two queens kills a void ray. And if you have 12 queens and he's got five voids, looks like you win that fight. And then it's not that long until you have your spire going up and you can do that as well. And then that's when larger supply situations happen. And you can deal with it then with your actual tech unit when you can afford to make a lot of it at once. So let's let's genuinely see when your when your fourth base gets saturated. It's gonna be I called nine minutes. Okay, you got your fourth base is starting to saturate with three drones at eight and a half minutes. And you're making mutas right now. Now, here's a situation you're putting yourself in. If you did the way that I'm explaining to you, where you went drone crazy, mineral crazy. I say this a lot on my streams, and I'll say it again before I explain my point I'm about to make here, which is why your supplier would be really high. If you have a fully saturated mineral line and a fully saturated gas, everything that is off of layer and hatchery, especially mutalisk and zergling, you can make units faster than you can, uh, or sorry, you can, you're, you're, you can make your money faster than you can spend it, okay? You will never spend all of your money. You will never be riding zero zero, ever, on a layer. Okay, I, I just wanted to make sure that's very clear. If this base is fully saturated, you do not spend money faster than you make it. That does not happen. You generate it faster than you spend it. That is a fact. So if that is a fact, the fact that you have surpluses where you're not fully saturating super fast and instead you're gas prioritizing and you're expanding slowly and you're stockpiling you're, you're 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 instead of generating and spinning fast all the time you're saving and stockpiling and saving and stockpiling for one big push that you've been saving for for a while and it's like misleading it feels like it's a big investment but you could have made more if you just made more bases faster and then made more gas mining faster and then generated faster and you spin out of all those bases consistently. You would have more that way because the point I'm trying to make here is, is you could be like maxed out at like a little bit around nine minutes here. Genuinely maxed out at like nine minutes if you would have done what I'm saying with Queen Mutaling. That being your composition. But at nine minutes, you're probably going to be at like 145 supply. So you're really far behind where you could be. And this is the trade-off of what it does to you because like what, what that means if you're maxed out at nine minutes you know what that means you're fucking strong and then every ling that dies can be traded into a muta as your gas continues to mine like crazy so your muta count could just grow as your ling count would shrink and then you could invest into the more powerful unit you have over time you could just rotate it into it as the gas keeps coming into your bank account and that'd be great but what you've done is you've gas prioritized, so you've went for like this initial muta push really fast, right? You're like, let's. I'm making. I I, I want to base the game on my first 11 mutas as a priority, and everything else. Not I'm not necessarily all in, but everything else is slower than it could have been because I really need these first 11 mutas now. What are these first 11 mutas gonna do? Let's let's let's. This is important as fuck. This, a lot of Zerg players don't understand this, but if these mutas don't do anything then your build makes literally no fucking sense because you could have made more than 11 mutas in the long run at a faster pace. Like, the, here's here's how this works, okay? I, I want to make sure this... I'm going to put this in fucking paint because I, I feel like people might not understand what I'm trying to say. It's like, I want to make sure that you guys get it. Um, if there is a graph, okay? If there's a graph and this is like time... Oh, uh over like yeah or I don't think the fucking army army no, army is what I want to use here that makes more sense if you do a the 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 green one will be gas player and the blue one will be mineral player okay so it'd be like this is what it looks like for a uh, a gas player it looks like this okay ready this is what it looks like for a gas player you're developing you're developing, you're developing, you're developing, and then you have this like plateau, and then you have a spike. And then you have this like slow development after that, where it just slowly develops again. And that's what a overall a uh, gas player looks like. There's like this this plateau, and then a spike. 
because you you, you develop kind of slow because you're not really efficiently mar like making your economy as well as you could, but you have a spike pretty fast and then it just spikes up and then that's it. And this is what a mineral player would look like. It starts developing about the same as the gas, but then it slowly starts pulling ahead a little bit at the early stages because of the fact that you have more minerals. Oh, sorry, I kind of made that line like shit. I'm like trying to make it somewhat close, but it does start gapping a little bit more over time. And then it looks like this. And you don't have, like this, then right here, uh, what was, I'll keep going and I'll explain what I, what I just showed you in a second. And then this one would go more like this. Uh, and then this is obviously up here. This is like, this represents max supply, I guess. That black line at the top represents maxing out. So you're like on your way still for a while to uh, max out, essentially. And what happens is, is you're in the moment when your mutas pop out. When you do a, when you do a gas priority, which is the green bar, you're in this moment right here. This is, this is the crunch of time moment you're in right there. That's the part of the game we're in right now. You are initially at that one brief moment in time, that one moment, you have a very small window of time to where you have a lead that's going to be for the next maybe like minute like or like 80 seconds of the game or 90 seconds. <coughs> because you don't have developing stages in your build that are fa as fast as a mineral build because you saved a lot and you priority gas a lot, which means you're expanding slow, but you have a faster initial army. So your army exploded a little bit at that one stage. And if that one stage right here cannot get the job done, it wasn't worth it. This now puts you in a situation where this army needs to fucking do damage to make the Protoss slow down. Because if you do nothing to Protoss, and if Protoss were to be the guy with the blue line, you would die. So let's, this again, it just puts a lot of emphasis on this needing to get shit done. It's all it does. It's not good for your gameplay. It's weak. Because, for instance, if you do nothing, if you do nothing, and then you go back to playing, like, flying around the map, and then just kind of chilling a little bit, you're like, all right, I couldn't get an attack off. He's there. He's, he has units. I couldn't make anything work. Imagine if you then, later on, when you are forced to take a fight against Protoss at this stage right here, when it's, uh, when Protoss has, like, 140 supply and you have 200. Imagine that. Like, if Protoss has, like, 130 and you have, like, 200. If if you had the mineral build. So, again, the Protoss is going to be, like, 130 in either example, okay? But you, with the mineral build, could have been at, like, 200 supply. Because it still could include a lot of mutas. You just opened with mutas. Vibe isn't good at math. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm amazing at math. But if you open up a gas build, it stalls out the entire rest of your build throughout the rest of the game at a slower pace. So now you're going to have, like, 140 supply to his 130 supply because you're pacing slow as shit or something like that. Your axes are wrong. I don't give a fuck. You get the point. I don't care. I, it's, I don't care. It, the concept is still there. It still matters. Fuck the graph. Okay, I'm just going to close it because uh, if you don't understand this, I'm not going to explain it again. And F you. <laughs> Let's see what you do. What are you going to do? So you canceled a base that was just started within half a second ago. So far, not worth it. And then you run away. Okay, what else are you going to do? Nothing. You're doing nothing. Not worth it. You're scaling. You can, again, remember what I said? You could be like maxed out right now. You could genuinely be like maxed right now with more mutas than 11 or 12. You could be maxed out right now with a large, just a, I can't give you the exact number because it really depends on a lot of things, but just more, more than you have. The longer you wait, the more money you would have had if you would have prioritized economy first. And mineral, because again, when I say economy, I'm not saying prioritize your gas. Economy is minerals only because the more minerals you have, the more drones you have, the more bases you have, the more gas you can explode on. You've done genuinely nothing so far. This is not paying for itself in any way. 
for the investment of why like you handicapped yourself to make this earlier and you've done nothing with it so now you're scaling at a slower pace which is going to give Prodos an edge against you and now not only that mutas are a unit that starts to suck cock really early against sky toss you need to be going corruptors and you also need to be going carapace Weapon mutas lose to carriers. They lose to Phoenix. And that, that that's two. That's 50% of what Skytos could be. He could make four units out of the Stargate, and two of them could straight up just kill the muta right off the bat. Like, the only way muta wins is if you have a lot of it overwhelming your opponent. And that's not happening anymore. You're, you're like, you're not really capitalizing on that. You're not keeping a big lead in the game. And the, the longer this takes, the shittier mutas are going to scale against... Uh, or, or, sorry, he has an oracle as well. He has a phoenix, a void ray, an oracle, a carrier, and a tempest. I, forgot, I, didn't, I didn't consider oracle, and the reason why I didn't consider oracle is because an oracle can't fucking attack a muta. So I feel like it was kind of irrelevant. Uh, but thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> My chat is stickler as shit right now. Uh, but yeah... Uh, Mutas are going to scale really poorly because they are they just can't take good trades the bigger the army the Protoss gets. It's just going to start being really shitty for you. You need Corruptor. And you need Carapace as well because and this is another example that I can explain for another, the next 20 fucking minutes. But Carapace just scales better than, than weapons for Corruptor. And the simple, straightforward reason for that is if you're making enough Corruptor... To, one, to, do, to do more than a one shot on a carrier or any unit Protoss has, that's correct. You should be making a lot of it so you can one shot, one shot, one shot. You should not be trying to do the math and making exactly enough Corruptors to like barely one shot a carrier. You should be making more than enough to do it because you guys are both going to lose units throughout the fight. And if you lose Corruptors but you can still maintain a one shot, that's going to increase the power of your, of your fight there tremendously. And if you're able to one shot him because you overmake Corruptor... It doesn't matter if you have weapon upgrades because you're having overkill anyways and you're going to be doing 1,000 damage or 800 damage or 700 damage or 600 damage and you're going to be one-shotting a carrier either way. It's way more than enough damage either way. But if you have Carapace, you're still going to one-shot carriers because there's overkill with no weapon upgrades because you have enough damage with all your Corruptors to one-shot a carrier or a Void Ray. But your Corruptors are going to last longer because they're going to take a lot less damage from the damage they're taking. And here's the crazy here's another crazy reason why it's worth it. Here's a simple number. A weapon upgrade for a corruptor gives it plus two damage versus a carrier. An armor upgrade versus a corruptor gives it uh, plus sixteen armor versus a carrier. You get sixteen value per carapace upgrade versus a carrier, and you get two value per weapon upgrade versus a carrier. So at the end of the day, you get forty eight value for level 3 carapace or you get 6 value for level 3 weapons and why does this make sense because a corruptor's attack is one attack it, there are none right now so that does, it's whatever but a corruptor has one attack and it gets plus 2 damage per upgrade that's it plus 2 damage that's all it does one attack plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 that's all it does but a carapace upgrade gives it plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 but here's the crazy thing a carrier has 16 fucking attacks. It has an attack that says damage 6, attacks 2, which means it, you double the attack because an interceptor shoots 2 lasers, so it has 2 fucking attacks, which means armor applies twice, and it has 8 interceptors. And each interceptor attacks once in the attack timer of 2.14. So you have 6 damage times 2 is 12, which is what each interceptor is doing times eight on top of that is fucking 96. So each carrier does 96 fucking damage. Each, oh, fucking just hit my finger. Each damage it like swoops in and does a pass with all its interceptors, 96, 96, 96. But if you get an armor upgrade, you know what that does? Five times two times eight. That's 10 times two or uh, sorry five times two is 10 times eight is 80 96 is 16 less than 80 or is, is 16 less or I see, fuck you chat you guys are fucking me up with like i'm, I'm trying to say shit weird now because i'm overthinking what i'm fucking trying to say for you guys 16 
is the difference of 96 and 80, which is exactly what one upgrade is worth. So it's fucking huge. It's amazing. Carapace is way better than weapons against Skytoss. Especially if, if you're making mutas, you're just gonna die unless you can like base trade and break their economy. But that's not happening right now. You're doing no damage. So if you're gonna fight the army, it's really yeah. up to Carapace Corruptors. It's so much better. Okay, let's... Uh, so you're trying to kill economy. I don't know why he's not doing cannons and mineral lines, but he totally should. You're trying to kill some more economy there with your lings. You did just manage to kill a total of 23 probes. So good job on that. You had Banelings blow them up too right there just now. You kill economy. I would say that's not bad, but I think it's a little bit late though because you're starting to finally kill probes 11 minutes into the game. Either one of you could be maxed by now. And if you're killing workers when someone's maxed out, you know what you could effectively do for them? Just make their army size bigger. If you're going to kill workers, that needs to be happening in the first like four minutes of the game or five minutes of the game, not 11. There is plenty of money for him to be maxed already and same with you. Also, you just lost all your mitas because all your banes died too without killing lings. Uh, so that's brutal. And now you're going Corruptor. And you're still, you're now you got a Carapace. You're going Double Spire. Again, Double Spire is pointless as well. I want you to know this. The only reason why you should ever get Double Spire, if you ever do, is because one of them is going to make a Greater Spire because you're afraid of an Archon transition. Because Archons can deal with Corruptors amazingly well. So then Brute Lords can deal with the Archons while the Corruptors deal with the Carriers. If that's what you're afraid of, that could make sense. But if you're making Double, double Upgraded Corruptors and that's all you're going to do, it's pointless because here's why. If you're getting weapon upgrades as well as characters upgrades, you, uh, the the whole logical point you should be at anyways with corruptors is enough to one shot the carrier, which means you're over making corruptor because corruptors are gonna die during the fight, and you want to maintain a one shot. Ideally, that's what you want to have happen. So you're picking shit off quickly with single intervals of shots. If you have weapon upgrades, you're gonna have less corruptors because it, you're investing 200 gas into a spire, and you're investing multiple gas rounds into an upgrade that you don't need because you have overkill. So in theory, if you have level two weapons, you're gonna you're gonna have like five less corruptors than you could have had, and five corruptors by itself with no weapon upgrades already does like a hundred fucking damage a shot to a carrier. You don't need a weapon upgrade. You just need enough corruptors because the last thing you want to do is give Protoss time to make more shit. If you're gonna go for a spire, the whole point of it is like if you're gonna uh, be aggressive against Skytoss in general, no matter what you use. The whole point is that you hit your supply thresholds you're looking for at a op like an optimal time, and then you fucking punish Skytoss before it maxes out. If Skytoss ever maxes out, none of these aggressive things work anymore, and instead what you have to do is do something more cost-efficient, like add in a bunch of Static D, add in Spellcasters. Do something more than just straight up fighting him on his territory. You can only make that work when you're taking a lead with supply because you break him down before he's set up. It's the only way that works. Okay. You're making way too much Ling Bane as well. You're, this, this is a, another thing that's... De your Banes are making you have less Corruptors. You're, you're making less gas units because you're making you're over making Lings. You should only be making Zerg... If you're going to attack a bunch of cannons, a few Banelings could make sense. But, like, like if, 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 you can, if you can. But, uh... <coughs> in general, if you're going to attack a new base and it doesn't have cannons yet, just use fucking Zerglings and go break it because it doesn't cause gas. Okay, he's making a huge mistake by fighting you with half his army and then having the other half of his army over here. That's a terrible move by Protoss. You should be focus firing his, his carriers right now with your Corruptor. And you notice how fast your Corruptors die? They, they just like melt because they don't have armor enough, enough of it. You're getting out upgraded right now. The Protoss right now, where's his mothership? Did it die? Where, what are, what's the fuck is his weapon upgrade right now? He's level two weapons, and he's four seconds from level three. So you're already negative one upgrade, which means these carriers, every time they shoot you, are doing 16 more damage than they should be, and you're one-shotting him anyways, ideally. If you don't have enough to one-shot, why the fuck are you fighting him in the first place? 
uh, that's a that's a rule of thumb. If you're a pro, if you're a Zerg player, and you fight a fucking carrier blob, and you're not even you don't even have enough corruptors to one shot a carrier, why the fuck are you fighting that? <laughs> Get out of there. Make more. Come back when you can one shot him. That is the worst fight in the world for Zerg. So, yeah, it's just it's important to know that. Um, but now you're about to, like I said, you're already taking 16 more damage per wave now because you're out upgraded by one upgrade. But you're about to be out upgraded by double because your carapace is not even started. And his weapons level three are finishing in four seconds. So that's 32 more damage per carrier. He's getting bonus into you now every time he shoots you. And if you think if you do the math, how many times does 32 have to add up to surpass 200? Seven. So if he has seven carriers, he's now going to have that excess to be able to one shot a fucking extra corruptor now every time he fucking does a pass in your army. That's a lot of fucking damage. And the, like he's not going to probably stop at seven carriers. He's probably going to have like 14. So that's like double corruptors excess that are just dying now because it's surpassing 400 health of corruptor now. It's, it's just basically a lot of bonus damage you're just fucking eating and you're just taking for no reason. And uh, to be honest, he he should have... Like, it would be nice. He did kill a lot of carriers there, but he should not have stayed there and lost all of his corruptors. He didn't have enough to one-shot, and there's shield batteries here, and there's a bunch of cannons. He would have started losing out in the, in the long run there. The only thing Zerk has going for him right now is he's got more bases. That's the only thing he has going for him. But more bases doesn't matter if Protoss gets to max supply and then just fucks you in the ass. Because his army is just better than yours because you don't make your army properly. Because again, if, you, if the Protoss maxes out, like I, I said this before, you can't win anymore just going Hydras or just going Corruptors. You need aggressive Spore Crawlers or like a Spellcaster type situation going on. Something more than just this. Just that. To be fair, though, if this guy doesn't use spellcasters either, you could actually win with pure corruptor if you understood how to clump up your units, focus fire, void ray, and then clump up your units, focus fire, void ray, clump up your units, focus fire, void ray, because void rays can penetrate the, the carapace corruptor really well. Carriers really can't. Void rays are the scary part here. So if you clumped up and outranged the carriers and then picked off the voids every now and again, and then you minimize the damage of the void by doing that, like, I do this on my stream all the time. Whenever I'm fighting someone who goes pure air, you could make it that work like that. That's a little bit technical, though. Uh, it, I would say I, I'm not going to talk any more about it because it's definitely not diamond level. Here's an easy thing you can do, okay? If you fight someone, here's the easiest thing in the world to do. This is a diamond player can do this. If you're fighting someone who is going pure carrier and pure void ray, that's it. And you have cor cor corruptors. Ideally, please, for the love of God, get fucking Carapace. You have to have that no matter what. People who don't get Carapace are just missing the fucking point pretty hard for what the, the, how it works. Get Carapace. Ideally, have level three. And do this. Make, like, two Vipers. Just two Vipers. That's all you need. You don't need a lot. Just two. Have a couple Overseers with your army as well, so that way you can see his army under a mothership. And literally do this. Group up your army. Like, make some changelings and find out where he is. So you don't just blindly run into him. Have an idea where the fuck he is before you engage him. And when you engage him, all you got to do is this. Auto attack towards his army. Parasitic bomb. Two of his fucking carriers that are, like, in near the front of his army. Not, not directly on top of each other, but maybe do, like, this carrier right there. And maybe the one right behind it more in the middle. Or this one on the left of it. It's fine. Just make a large radius of parasitic bomb. And then right click directly underneath a carrier. So all your... And then spam it. So all your corruptors go like this. Like if his carriers are like this, your corruptors go like this. They just like clump up right underneath all of his carriers. You have tw like 35 or like 40 corruptors just hurtling, like huddling underneath two car carriers with parasitic bomb on them. And what will happen is all of his interceptors are going to fly into you repeatedly and fucking blow up to the parasitic bomb. 
You can do this if the guy doesn't use Storm or Archons. If he's a pure air guy who never uses ground units, you can totally abuse him that way. And it's the easiest fucking thing in the world to do because then all the carriers interceptors go just poof, just die. And then you don't have to deal with anything now. Then it's just corruptors fighting paperweights in the air, essentially. And then it's over. And then you can... Whatever supply died in the engagement, you could remake into Zergling Baneling and you can just blow up his bases and piss on his bases with the remainder of your corruptor that are still there after you kill all the carrier. Easy fucking peasy. That'd be the easiest way you could abuse this guy because he doesn't even use fucking intercept or he doesn't even use Templar or Archons. I have not seen a single ground unit from him the entire game. He made one zealot. Okay, yeah. And if he uses ground units like Storm, and if he uses t uh, Disruptor, Archon, whatever, Immortal, mixed in with some Sky Toss, then you need to start using Spellcasters and Static D yourself. Then, then it gets really hard. That's why Sky Toss is hard as fuck to beat, because you have to micro like a god. But ju just imagine, just imagine. Okay, just imagine. What if you had a Parasitic Bomb on, like, the mothership? You had a Parasitic Bomb on, like, this Void Ray right there. And then what if you, you're uh, like, okay, so first of all, two steps, two step process. What if you engaged him first and then he turned on prismatic alignment and then you f ran away because his army is slow as fuck when he turns that on. It snares the move speed of a void ray when it's on and a carrier is already slow as it is. Fly away. It's a 45 second cooldown or like a 41 second cooldown. Just go away. And then let it expire over the course of 14 seconds Go right back in. Now he doesn't have prismatic alignment. Uh, parasitic bomb. Two units in the middle of his army, or like in the, in the, like near the front-ish, whatever. Uh, uh, what? Parasitic bomb. Something you're gonna go into, and then get all your corruptors to get on top of that unit, and then literally go like this. So you parasitic bomb like a void ray, and then like a mothership or something, and then you right click right there. All your corruptors cl clump up right there, and then you go right click a void ray, right click the ground, right click a void ray, right click the ground, right click the void ray, right click the ground. Right Right click a void ray, right click the ground. Do this repeatedly until all the void rays are dead. And then do this on all the carriers. And then right and then here's why you right click the void ray, it focus fires. Right click the ground, you stay clumped up underneath a bomb, which in turn makes all the interceptors stay clumped up while they attack you underneath a bomb. Once the bomb expires, or once you see all of the interceptors kind of just disappear, you don't have to right click the ground anymore. That part is over. So right-clicking the ground keeps you hiding underneath a parasitic bomb so that he runs into AoE to try to hit you repeatedly. That's why you would do that. Once the interceptors are dead, you don't have to fucking spam the ground anymore. But now, again, at this point, you're dead, though, because you cannot win against Skytoss with just this anymore. It's, o it's over. This does not beat that anymore. You have to do something more. Because you, you, you're... you beyond the point when th the corruptors will work. You missed too many opportunities to take advantage of the game earlier, and now you're fucked. Do you even have level 3 Kerpus yet? You do. Okay, good. Thank God. Now, you can totally get level 3 weapons once you have level 3 Kerpus, and you can start upgrading it later. That's totally fine. Because then that means, even if some of your characters die, and you start maybe start getting close to that threshold of you might not one-shot a carrier, it pushes your threshold higher because you have more damage per Corruptor. But you should always engage with a high threshold anyways. It's the whole point why weapons are kind of pointless uh, initially. But once you have a control of the game later on, it's totally okay to get weapons later. And that, that, that is an addition. Just don't prioritize it against Sky Toss. And as you can see, Corruptors just got farmed. Uh, you did decent. You, you killed a couple units there, but you have no fucking money now. You're out of money. And uh, yeah, you're dead now. This army traded better than yours, straight up. You could have won this fight, though, if you Parasitic Bombed. Like, imagine, just imagine this. See how your Corruptors engage this right here? You come in. What if 
you parasitic bombed two of his fucking units like right in the front and you just have your corruptors on top of him kind of like you do imagine if like within five seconds of this fight starting all these interceptors just go and it's just now you have uh 25 corruptors fighting five void rays or six void rays because all the carriers interceptors are going to die because look at how clumped up the interceptors stay on the top of the corruptor they would be sitting in parasitic bomb just bathing in it they would bathe in it right now and Interceptors have 80 hit points overall. 40, 40. 40 shield, 40 health. Parasitic Bomb does 120 damage. AoE. You would 100% kill the Interceptors over a matter of about 5 seconds. It takes 7 seconds. 7 seconds to do 120 damage with a bomb. A Parasitic Bomb. And Interceptor has 80 hit points. You do the math. How long would it take 80 to, to happen if 7 has to add up to 120? Like, there's a percentage there, like a ratio. Probably be about five seconds. This fight was a lot longer than five seconds. But, yeah, you get the point. Hopefully. Anyways, uh, Vol'jin and Drake. I love you guys. Uh, shout out to your boy, Charlie, as well. Charlie's a fucking boss. I hope, I hope this helps either one of you. Mostly the Zerg, because it was mostly a Zerg-focused thing to look at. But Protoss, even you, I hope this helps you a little bit in some way. Uh, yeah. And uh, appreciate you. I appreciate you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Anyone else who watched this as well, hope this helps you too. And I will see you guys in the next replay analysis, whatever it might be. Take it easy. Much love. See you next time. And later. See you guys.